Owen Kennedy is a singer-songwriter uh, who formerly lived in Massachusetts, now living in Maine. He is a, known as award-winning songwriter. He's a naturalist, a master bird whistler, mm -hmm. and uh, he works as a music therapist and uh, has been described as being very helpful <coughs> guide in caring to many people uh, in the work that he does and in his, his daily life interactions with people through music and himself. Uh, most recently, he was a mentor for the Arlington Family Folk Chorale, uh, which included a, a large number of uh, multi-generational participants who get the opportunity to be performing and uh, singing before a large audience. Um, and uh, so he, uh, Owen instructed, uh, shared some of his songs that the chorale was able to sing um, in chorus. He is a teacher uh, in many ways and has taught guitar for 25 years as well as piano and ukulele and also teaches about beauty of nature, importance of justice, peace, harmony, and love in his songs as well. He has five CDs of his songs, and he is presently working on a songbook. Please welcome to my right here, here to share his songs this morning. Give a big hand for Owen Kennedy. This song be a loon. Let it swim and sing under the moon. Let its feathers zip up tight for an underwater flight into deep blue. Let this water always be clear. Let its inspiration always be here Let me understand the sound of the water flowing down Over a million stones If it comes to me in the midnight hour Will I answer to its call? Will I wake up from the dream that I've been living? Will I keep my heart open? Will it strengthen my devotion to the light? This morning a loon called my name And I'm overjoyed I'll never be the same I can still see the light And the waning of the night And the morning star And this loon has given a chance to my soul who was waiting to dance Like a child in the sun On a naked joyous run Into the water's arms And it came to me in the midnight hour And I answered to its call And I woke up from the dream that I'd been leaving And I kept my heart open Like a shiny wavy ocean In the moon So now that you had a chance to see with my glasses off, <laughs> what do you like better? Either way. Either way? Okay, because I think this might be better for me because it seems to hold my hair back a little bit <laughs> from behind my, from getting in my mouth, you know, which is uh, not desirable. You know, I'm so intrigued by this whole ivory build woodpecker situation. It's, it's like always just there at the back of my mind. And I loved how you, how you just went into it and, and it was an emotional, spiritual thing for you, you know? It's that way for me too. <laughs> 
I'm going to sing you my shortest song. It's only short in time, though. You know what I mean? Chickadee, you are so small, and the world is so big, and it's been so cold. But you chickadee dee 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 on the dreariest days, and you brighten up the gloom with your alacritous ways, and you seem to go straight into my heart and you take my blues away No, like, uh, I, I was in uh, Juno in uh, 1980 uh, working for the Sierra Club Legal Defense Fund. And uh, it was the year after Mount St. Helens uh, blew. And uh, when I was there, it rained for a solid month. I don't think that's totally un atypical for, for Juno. Um, but we, it didn't daunt us, and we went out with our backpacks uh, on the weekend and hiked up to a lake w up in the mountains. And I sat on the bluff overlooking the lake, there was breeze going across the water and there were swallows dipping. I remembered that the Greeks thought that the swallows hibernated under, under, wa under the, the water because they saw them moving so close to the water, but the reality was, of course, they were flying south. And um, so I'm sitting there and I'm leaning against the rock, there's a just gray sky and three chickadees come over and they, they were in the little branches around me looking down and turning their heads and going, you know, making their little noises. And uh, I felt something happen. I, I can never describe properly or explain, but it was this, as if I was being lifted out of my body. I felt the whole universe around me kind of bend and expand like it was breathing. And, uh, yeah, that's all there is to it. Um, ever since then, I've been a Chickadee fan. I was already a Chickadee fan before that, but they vaulted up to the top five birds that I love in the world. Um, and um, so anyway. Uh, if you were to ask me what my favorite bird in the world is, I might be afraid to tell you, uh, simply because then I'd be pinned into only liking that one as number one. But for a number of years now, it's been the yellow-bellied sapsucker. <laughs> and I do uh, count woodpecker species in correct taxonomic order as a way of helping myself go to sleep at night <laughs> because I'm an insomniac. Although I feel a little pinned in by that, actually. It's more like there's a lot of things that uh, are calling to me and they don't, uh, you know, limit themselves to the daytime. The third time a small sounding airplane has passed over this town tonight. Who would be flying up in the cold dark sky so late it is 2.39? And I'm always amazed how the drone of an engine so far from me travels through space. Resonating with the walls, the floors, the beds brings my pillow my face. Why didn't counting the woodpeckers of the world work on my mind? Breaking them down into genus and species, all 207, that usually slows my mind down. I 
guess I should be thankful I don't believe in the terrible monsters that came into my mind when I was a little boy trying to imagine my mother's face. It is odd that a six-year-old boy would always lie awake, waiting for everyone else in the house to be sleeping before he could begin to dream. But I love the sounds you make when you're lying asleep next to me. The old woman upstairs again with soft shuffling footsteps at 329. I feel what she's feeling, I know what she's going through, being awake at the spirit time. I still remember the sound my grandfather's shuffling feet made upstairs from my bed. Even after he died, the kitchen floor creaking, I swear it was outside my head. There was the time shadows of branches were thrashing in silence, cast on the wall and the soul of a cat floated in through the window and over my body and into the hall. Even though But even though I have so much trouble sleeping There's plenty of energy to go around Some of it comes from the love you give me And some of it comes from my spirit dancing One afternoon in 1970 I realized there was sound in my ear Sweet tintinabulation but I love the sounds you make When you're lying asleep next to me And how you obliviously let your arm fall warm You know, my, my wife Cindy, uh, in the last few year, uh, last couple of years, has gotten into hot flashes. <laughs> and I will tell you, that is an accurate description of what happens. Because, you know, we'll be there, lying next to each other, and she'll be per cool and dry one second, and the next second she's going to be damp and hot. Her whole body just goes whoop. And, uh, you know, uh, I, feel, I feel compassion for her. Because I have them too. <laughs> and I just had one, and I, I'm feeling uh, glad that I uh, put on underarm deodorant this morning. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. One more? Yes. One more? One. Two? <laughs> Cheryl? Five more minutes. Five more minutes. Well, uh, I have a song that I want to do. It's probably four minutes long, and then I'll see if I can come up with a one-minute song. I will, okay, I'm going to talk for my one minute. Then I'll do a four-minute song. Um, so I'm going out to Monhegan on May 15th. Uh, we're staying out there for a week. We got married on May 16th on Monhegan uh, with a motley group of about 12 people. We were just basically birders that I knew who gathered, who saw that we were getting married and came over and participated in the ceremony, which was a Native American ceremony with an eagle feather and, you know, total hippie stuff. Um, and uh, anyway, I was on Monhegan one fall, probably October 2nd or 3rd, and I was sitting at the ice pond, which is a little pond where they used to cut ice. And way down at the end of the pond, I was watching a yellow warbler, which is a very small, beautiful bird, whose scientific name is Dendroica petechia, owing to the little petechia stripes on his breast. And uh, 
the, uh, the late afternoon light was casting into the molecules of his body and making him glow, you know. And uh, I, uh, I wrote a song for him called Yellow Bird. Tiny little bird with a beady eye Flashing in the sun, filling up the sky The sun is going down, but it's okay Tiny yellow bird swallowed up the day Early in the morning, let it out again When you sing like an angel from a tree I'm so lucky to have you as a friend I found you and you found me Yellow bird Yellow bird Sing your song again Some people say the world is getting smaller There's a big steel bird in the sky But right now I feel the world is getting bigger When I'm looking in your shiny little eye There's so much light coming out and surrounding My heart is opening wide so much energy in such a tiny space equals MC squared, I realize. It equals MC squared, I realize. Yellow bird! Yellow bird! Sing your song again. snuffles along its lumpy way, eating its fill, extending itself little by little bit. It's a caterpillar's nature to rumple the world and to be rumpled by it. But eventually, the caterpillar has snuffled and eaten its way for one caterpillar life, 
And so it wraps itself in a solitary womb called a cocoon or chrysalis. And then once it's settled into this secret place, it immediately breaks down into its gooey elements. And between the life of the bumbly caterpillar and the elegant butterfly or moth, there's this middle time. When the caterpillar becomes a middle thing that's unrecognizable as a critter or even critterish, and it's in that middle time that the caterpillar goes back into all the elements upon which it came, breaks down to a cellular atomic level. And then and only then, when it has let go of everything wonderful and fine and hard and toilsome about its rumpled days, it grows into its new self rearranging all those liquid elements into the paper-thin wings, delicate antenna, graceful long legs of the moth or butterfly form. And scientists have determined that the moth or butterfly, that entire new creation, actually remembers what it was like before its transformation. <laughs> A moth or butterfly will react to significant experiences remembered from its earthbound former life. Scientists have described exposing a caterpillar to an unpleasant smell, which they link to an unpleasant feeling, and eventually the caterpillar would have reacted adversely when it encountered the smell again. However, when the newly transformed moth was reintroduced to the same unpleasant smell, the moth reacts. Memories, events, and experiences of that caterpillar's days move forward. And the caterpillar's first self survived through the middle, unformed, elemental, unrecognizable as a critter phase. Scientists have also found that if you look carefully through a microscope in the body of a caterpillar, there are tiny elemental bits of the foreshadowed wings and butterfly body parts. Somehow, when this caterpillar becomes goo, those precious bits are safely tucked aside through all the melting and breaking down and brought into the process when reassembling and reforming. There's something about the future butterfly or moth patiently waiting in the caterpillar's deepest secret places. It's carried like a promise, like a question, like a soul. And there's also something of the caterpillar's knowledge and wisdom and rumpled caterpillar life that is carried forward into its new and transformed moth or butterfly self. And so I can't help but wonder what wisdom or image of my future self do I carry now within my heart? What promise or question or spirit within me is waiting for the right moment to fly? And when I transform, what of my former self will carry through? Perhaps those experiences that have broken me, that have broken me down to my barest self, are not ends, but a means to a new beginning. Perhaps the caterpillar and the moth are not either or propositions, and in turn, perhaps we're not either. She'll end her life in that tacky house. Black-eyed Susan pushing up through the asphalt Nobody here knows what she did before she was fifty Always the shut tight Venetian blinds Trash can put out every midnight on Sunday Always the smile twice a week for the store and the farm stand Maybe no one in this town ever wonders about her Children grow up heedless of what is always the same 
Somebody somewhere must know her well Blue forget-me-nots where butterflies linger Some far-off field where she loves and will be loved forever Children grow up heedless of what is always the same Somebody somewhere must know her well Blue forget-me-nots where butterflies linger Some far-off field where she loves and will be loved forever Some far off field where she loves and will be loved forever. I'm Jen Belisi from Golden Pond Assisted Living in Hopkinton. Staying active is essential to happy and healthy aging. Golden Pond has activities for seniors and people of every age. There is a, a diverse range of opportunities to be had. We've made some friendships, not acquaintances. If you'd like to participate in any of Golden Pond's upcoming events, visit the events page on Golden Pond's website or call 508-435-1250 for more information. We hope to see you soon.